Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures, Daily Dose of Nature. I'm your host, Sunny Vanderstar. Today's topic is the art of photo books, sharing your photographs in print. And it will be presented by our fabulous NatHab expedition leader, Charlie Reinertson. Charlie, thank you so much for presenting today. This looks like a wonderful topic. I'm excited to learn some tips. Let's dive in. Thanks, Sonny, and thanks everyone for being here. Uh, you know, whether you are a professional photographer or you have a lot of photos from trips that you've been on uh, or just memories that you want to put into print, uh, this talk is for you. So I'm hoping that uh, there will be some nuggets of information that will be helpful, kind of regardless of what uh, level of experience you have with creating photo books. Uh, today, we'll kind of start with some tips and budget hacks because in particular, it's, it's, it's an expensive thing to start to print your work and to print a book. Um, and so I have a few suggestions for how to minimize that cost or find ways to do it in a more inexpensive way. Um, I'll share some examples of photo books that I've put together of various different trips that I've been on. Um, and then at the end, we'll actually take a look at one of the platforms that I use uh, and go into their back end and kind of talk through how I navigate uh, the book builder. Um, at the very end, we'll do a Q&A, so save your questions and I'll make sure that we save some room to have a bit of, of a uh, discussion. Uh, so just a little bit about me before we get started. I've uh, worked in science communications for uh, more than a decade, and I've been responsible for a number of print publications. So uh, I've done some print quarterly uh, magazine layouts, and most recently I've worked on the Climate Solutions Exhibit in, in the Adirondacks uh, at the Wild Center. And recently I've launched my own business, Two Line Studio, and that's given me the flexibility to be able to guide again. Um, and so I guide with Natural Habitat Adventures about four times a year uh, from the monarch migration grounds in Mexico uh, to the uh, Yosemite and Yellowstone and Grand Teton. Um, and it's just this incredible experience to be able to connect people to these places and learn about this amazing world that we're in. Uh, but today we'll focus on building a photo book. and we're just going to dive right in because there's a lot to cover. Um, my first step always is to select images. And often the way that I'll do that, I'm working in Lightroom. And if that's familiar to you, you're able to add stars to photos. So I'll go through and star the photos that I want to create to select. And then from there, I'll edit those images. Um, and then eventually export them into a folder at the specs that you need for a book. One of the things I'll mention here, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this. That'll be a whole other webinar on its own of how to edit photos and image selection. Um, but one of the things I'll mention is that when we're looking at a screen, images look brighter than they actually are. And so often if I know I'm about to export to send a photo to be printed, um, I will increase the exposure of that image. And you can do that a couple different ways. You can open up the shadows. You can hire the, uh, bring the white point a bit higher as long as your highlights aren't clipping. Or you can just bump the exposure a little bit higher. One of the things that you can do to mitigate this or to have your digital representation of the image to be closer to what happens when it gets printed is to... Uh, set up your computer so that it's not so bright when you're editing your photos. If you look up, just Google, you know, how to calibrate my monitor for photo editing, tons of links will come up and then you can follow those suggestions to be able to calibrate your monitor. If you want a quick hack, just set your monitor at half the brightness of full and then edit your photos in the middle of a day. So that's another thing that can impact it. If the if it's bright and sunny around you, you're gonna edit your photos differently than if it's completely dark out, just because your eyes are adjusting differently to the 
computer. But if all of that was overwhelming to you, don't worry about it too much. Just edit your photos so that they look properly exposed and then send them on over to the book. We're, again, we're not spending too much time on that, but I wanted to make sure that we covered it because there's nothing worse than getting a book back and realizing that all of your photos are underexposed and your dark areas of your image are just muddy. So we want to avoid that. And the way to do that is to bump up your exposure. Um, so then taking a look at selecting a printer or a bookmaker, this is a big consideration and it's kind of beyond the scope of this webinar. Um, we're really going to talk about kind of layout and suggestions, but in my experience, I've used a few different companies with varying degrees of success. Um, the one that I recommend more than anything is Printique because it has really great print quality. Uh, but another one that's great is Blurb. Uh, if you want to list your book for sale for people to buy through Blurb, that's a pretty cool way to be able to get your work out there. And I would steer people away from Shutterfly. Just for me, the print quality doesn't meet what I want, but it is typically the cheapest way to get a book printed. Um, when I'm selecting a printer or a book bookmaker, um, I'm really kind of using these questions on the left to be able to figure out where I want to go from what's the purpose of my project. For instance, maybe I'm just trying to print memories from a family trip and I just want to capture them all. Um, so maybe that doesn't require kind of the high-end archival print that you might want uh, from Printique. Maybe you would be able to do a more budget level project. But if you're trying to print a gallery of images to be able to shop around to ex you know, different museums to be able to say, hey, here's what I'm capable of and I'd love to exhibit my work in your museum, um, you, know, you might want to spring for a, a book printing company or even just a portfolio that would be of a higher level. Uh, the other thing to think about is your budget, and this is kind of a project that can get away from you when it comes to actually buying these books. Often you can create a book and you just keep adding pages and you get to the end and you realize you've got an incredibly expensive project. So one of the ways that I manage budget is by setting how many pages I'm going to use and the scale of the book in the beginning and then not adding pages because that's how these projects can get really expensive. Um, and obviously kind of figuring out what quality level you want uh, will dictate where you end up trying to print your book. And then uh, the option to self-publish or sell that book online. Not all of these platforms allow that. Blurb is one that I've come across that does a great job of that. Um, another thing to consider is whether you can create a PDF and then just have a digital version of the book. That can also be a nice add. And then the last consideration, and this one's less of a consideration at this point, but the actual interface that you're using to build a book. So if you're doing it fully custom and you really are have great design chops, you're probably doing this in Adobe products um, and then uploading a design. So you'd be using InDesign or Photoshop um, but you, there are also all these online platforms that you can use that all of these services provide. And they have different functionality, and, but they all kind of work the same. This is going to make a lot more sense when we get to the tutorial. Um, another budget hack uh, would be looking at doing more of a craft approach to putting an album together. So never forget that you can print four by six and five by sevens. I feel like a lot of people, once we move to digital photography, forgot that you can just order a four by six set of all of your photos from a trip and then go out and get a binder and sleeves to be able to slide those photos into. And this can be a really great budget friendly way uh, to go. And it can also be really nice to be able to see which images you like printed. Because sometimes when I go to print, I'm surprised at which images I actually really like versus images that I thought I would love, but I actually don't. Uh, so that can be a really great way to go. You don't have to use these online um, photo book services. Another budget hack that I've come across that's worked for me is I get done with a trip and then I create a small book for my memories, 
the pictures I took from my phone, and then a larger book for more your kind of art gallery, large scale prints, uh, those photos that you really want to see blown up large. And this kind of helps uh, a couple ways because then you can budget your pages a little bit better. You don't start adding pages on that book. And then on top of that, a lot of places will say buy one, get another one half off. So if you go this route, um, you can tap into those savings that way. Um, so let's take a look at some examples. And as we go, I'll keep sharing some tips of what I've come across when I'm building books. Uh, the first one is a, a book that I, I built for a trip to Ireland. And this is a hardcover book uh, ordered through Blurb. Um, and uh, I did a wraparound image all the way around this hardcover. And then I was really trying to juxtapose some images that felt like you're right there and then some larger land scale, landscape scale images. So if I'm building books for myself and it's just memories, I don't have a given template that I'm using for every page. If I'm trying to show my work around as if it's uh, you know a, a portfolio of work, I'm gonna be really strict in how I'm using each page and I'm gonna set the pages up with specific gutters or white space going all the way around and only use a certain number of templates for each page that I've either built or used. Um, but when I'm doing a built book that's just capturing memories, I'm a little bit more playful. So you'll see this page, I've, I've created this huge image that goes across the fold and then a, a vertical image next to it. I'm thinking about color and how it plays against each other. So we've got that rich blue sky and then on the right, kind of this inviting archway through the door. And I'm trying to think about like ways to trigger the memory of being in that place. Um, and that's this vertical image. It's nothing to write home about. But to me, having it there helps put me back in that memory in that place. And then the image on the left has a lot more drama. And I like that one a lot more. So here's what I'm talking about with layouts. If you're talking to a really strict kind of book binder or, or someone who's creating a layout for a magazine, they have already created like the templates and they know the rules that they're either making or breaking throughout the process. But if I'm building a book for myself, I'm really playful and I don't follow any rules at all. And I just think about a single spread and how to make that spread really fun. So with this, this one, one of the things that uh, you start to notice is that um, it's really nice to have detail shots. So like in the center of this image, that's a staircase in a castle on the left. That was a mount on the wall inside the castle. And then these were um, some English swans that were in the river outside the castle and in the moat. And so I wanted to put all those things together to kind of play with having really close up kind of um, shallow depth of field and then also this you know dramatic uh, image of the dam and the river as well um, so this is just you know trying things out one of the things you always want to think of when you're doing a layout in a book is that the way that the page folds and curls you're going to lose a part of the image in the middle unless you get a lay flat book and we'll talk more about that when we go to build the book but this book itself was with blurb and I didn't choose the lay flat option. So you have a curl on the page. Um, and so that's just something to take into account when you're deciding what format to get. Again, here I'm thinking about color and trying to balance all the way across. It's really important that it, when you're starting to do this, that you uh, have tried to create some really natural color when you're editing your images so that when you get to this point you don't have one that's like really green or really magenta um, and they balance out nicely um, sometimes it's really nice to have a little bit of a border going around um, and i really enjoy having this really big landscape scale and just dedicating an image to it this is the gap of dunlow and in, in ireland uh, which you can drive through, which is this really beautiful area. Um, and sometimes I like to print that picture all the way and bleed to the edge. Um, when I have images next to each other, 
this is, you can see there's a white line. Those are actually two different photos and I've played with them to be able to have a continuous horizon line. So that mountain kind of feels like it's continuing even though it's not. It is the same mountainside, but I've just lined them up in the layout of the page to kind of play with your perception and feel like it's a little bit three dimensional. And then another thing that I'll do, which is breaking all the rules, is to throw a vertical composition in there. If there's a really awesome photo that I want printed really large, I'll just flip the whole book. So right now that's, I've had to turn the whole layout to be able to look at these images. And one of the things that I have a hard time with, because of the way that these platforms work, you're paying per page and it's a flat fee whether or not you put an image on it. If I was doing like a gallery book, I would force myself to only put one image per page or maybe two, and there would be good white space around all of the images. Um, but if I'm doing it for myself, I just wanna see what these pictures look like printed large scale, and this is a fairly inexpensive way to do that um, by printing a book, and so I'll just maximize the space as much as I can and put a couple pictures on there as well. Every once in a while, it's really nice to get rid of those gutters and just go edge to edge and just immerse yourself in a location. This is on the Ring of Kerry in Ireland um, and just a really green mossy area and a creek going through it. Another thing that I'll do in layout is create kind of this film strip effect. So on the top, I've put this really large panoramic shot, and on the bottom, it's this sequence of images uh, that kind of tell a story or that uh, were taken in close sequential order. Um, and that I've found is a really nice way to, to bring your memory back of that place, because so often we're doing photo books because we're trying to transport ourselves to that memory. Sometimes just a spread like this doesn't really jog the memory, but then you put a little film strip on the bottom of all these little images that kind of make it feel like a movie, um, and it can make, trigger your memories and put you back in that place again. And this is another take on that, having a few different film strips. This is again being very playful and breaking all the rules of how to lay out um, a page, but it's also really fun to get um, to, to play around with these different layouts and, and combine different parts of the day uh, to be able to, again, in, in my mind, the purpose of a, a book like this is to really transport you back to that place and to remember what it was like to experience that landscape. Here is, is once again being playful, but one of the things that I'm looking at is that there's a continuity with this panoramic image that's extending all the way along the bottom. And then I've broken it up because I took so many pictures on this trip and I really wanted to get a lot of them in there. And every time I went to a full page spread showing one image, it just didn't quite capture the moment because the light was changing so quickly at this point in time. And, uh, and so I wanted to include a number of different photos. Um, and this is on the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland. One of the things that's really important to think about when you're taking pictures is getting the shot that you really want that's broader, that's landscape scale, but then also getting these detail shots. And I love to throw in close, close up shots of something and then a bigger sweeping shot in a spread of a two page spread. And that allows you to um, again, I think, kind of put you there and make you feel like you're standing in that place. But that requires that you remember to get a couple close-up shots of, and maybe shots that you don't think would be nice otherwise, but they might help uh, trigger your memory of, of what it was like being there. So this is one of those instances where I did, uh, I printed two different books, and you can't tell because I've of how I've taken pictures of these, but this is a much larger book. Um, and this is one where I was thinking more in kind of a um, creating a gallery of images that maybe I would shop around uh, to be able to look at getting them uh, exhibited. So you'll notice I did start to think about spreads where there was only a single photo and the left-hand side is uh, completely blank because it, 
forces you to pay attention to that picture. And if I were to make this picture even a quarter of the size, it would make that picture even more precious. And so when you're thinking about creating a portfolio, it's not always the best approach to fill the page. Uh, you might want to think about making smaller prints and isolate those prints because even when you're exhibiting work or you're framing work, the more white spaces there is, it often heightens kind of the um, impact of that of that piece. Not always, but um, that's just one of the things that I'm thinking about. And I'm not, you know, that first book that I showed, there were probably 50 pages that I, I didn't share. So this is not a comprehensive look at these books, but just getting a sense of it. And here, once again, I'm playing with that idea of uh, pictures that are not, this is not a panorama. It, it's not a cohesive image, but I've almost made it feel that way by connecting the horizon line, the mountainside, so that it looks like it's actually part of one, but it's not, um, if that makes sense. Um, and just playing around with, with full page spreads, really giving importance to an image. So you can see this one compared to the previous book, where you've got all kinds of collages and fitting in a bunch of things. This was kind of the book about memories. And then this is the book about kind of drama and what it just trying to show the uh, beauty of specific images. And this is another book uh, that I printed for uh, Pacific Northwest uh, trip. And once again, that white space around the image helps to make that image stand out, playing around with flipping this book vertically and giving you a chance to have vertical uh, photos as well, and play around with black and white and giving a full spread where it's entirely black and white because if one of these was color, it would most likely feel unbalanced. Uh, another thing that I love to do is create a little, uh, sidebar essentially so this is some lichen on bark really close up image and to me that kind of gives different meaning to this larger uh, scale photo of yosemite and the last idea if you're kind of doing more of a memory book um, is to gather different items and then lay them out and take a picture of them so Often these, you know, we take mementos from places, hopefully not national parks, um, and, uh, you know, maybe make a scrapbook out of them, but you can also take a picture and then put them into a photo book and then you can return those things back to where they came from. Uh, but I like doing that in some of my books. This one is a book from a trip to Croatia. Um, and I like to point this out because this spread the photo on the right is just ocean and it's just blue and I would never print this, but in a book setting, it's kind of nice because on the left, it's seeing the city of Dubrovnik or a portion of it. And then on the right, what you would be looking at if you were looking out from Dubrovnik. So just trying to paint a picture of what it's like to physically be in a place. Um, and then one of the things that I don't often do in my own work when I'm, uh, you know, doing more gallery style or fine art work. I don't often include people, but it is really helpful to have people in your images for scale um, and a reference point. And here's another example. These are two different pictures, even though they look very, very similar, but um, getting creative with your spread of, you know, different cropping next to each other this on the right you kind of lose a reference point for what you're looking at and on the left it looks more like a window that you're looking into and these are and this is at Pl Pledvice in in Croatia and and there are these limestone waters that are kind of opaque but very clear crystal clear water um, but the limestone gives it that kind of milky uh, blue quality Again, playing with horizon lines, playing with uh, trying to create spreads that um, all kind of share a color balance. Um, those are those are a few of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm building these books. Uh, so those are 
kind of my primary tips for how to build books. Now I'm going to take a couple minutes just to show you one example of um, a company that you can use to be able to build a book. I'm not endorsing this company. I'm not getting any kind of a kickback from them. I just, I think it's helpful to be able to take a look and um, see what it's like. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and share something else. Stop sharing. And All right, we're going to share this screen. Ooh, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to do this. Just a minute. Let me stop sharing. Let me check this again. So we're going to, if I can, we're going to take a look at uh, Printique's platform. All right, see how this goes. So that's showing Printique. And again, this is not an endorsement of them in particular. It's just one example of a company that I've used in the past. Um, I've already preloaded uh, pictures from a Natural Habitat Adventures Monarch Butterfly Trip. But I just want to show a couple ways that you can go about this. So we're in our first spread left page, right page, and uh, you can look at spread layouts and take a look that way. You can organize this on the left-hand side over here by three photos per spread or one photo per spread. Um, and if you were to drag this over, now that's creating a bucket to put your photos into. So uh, I would then go up to this tab on the far left, and on your screen, this is probably pretty small. I'm not going to spend too much time doing this, uh, just because I don't think it's a great uh, way to be able to see it. But if I had a photo that was really great for that format, I would just drag and drop it in like that. Um, but typically, how I work in this program is a little bit different. I tend to just grab a totally custom design and I, I work from my photos. So right now I'm thinking about the story of visiting the monarch butterfly uh, wintering grounds. And to me, that story kind of starts quietly. And that means that it's a cold, dreary day uh, and the butterflies are all clustered on the trees like this. And so for me, that vertical shot kind of sets up the story. And then I'm looking for a horizontal shot. And this takes pretty good memory of what your photographs are before you put them in. Um, but I like the idea of these two being together, uh, potentially this one over here. Um, and I'm just paying attention to where the page split is. So the split of the page is right there. And I'm going to drag it, and it'll snap into place to make sure it's dead center. When you're doing custom layouts, it's really important to double check like that your image isn't accidentally off a little bit. Um, and then just looking at this, I think I'd round it out. I'm just thinking about the darkness that happens in the morning before the sun comes out. There's not a lot of butterfly activity, but there's some really beautiful flowers around. Um, so when you drag a photo into this layout, it's going to automatically bring it in at the ratio of that photo. If I wanted to actually uh, crop this photo, there is a way to do that <clears throat> down here where uh, there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can create a rectangle for that photo to go into and then you move it around for there. Um, you do that from just grab a shape like a uh, square, get that shape the way you want it. So I'm just thinking about balancing out these two images and I roughly want it like that. And then I go back into my photos, I drag that same photo. Oh, they've changed. Let me just try that again. So you have to do it from masks now. They used to allow you to do it from rectangles. It's been a probably a couple months since I've built a book. Um, but 
All right, that's going to stump me too. Usually there's a way to do that. But you get the idea of where I'm headed there. Normally I do design my books in InDesign, um, but this would be kind of a dramatic way to start uh, the book with some dead butterflies at the bottom of the forest floor there. Uh, because this is kind of a, a cycle of rebirth. So you get the idea. I'm not crazy about this spread. We're kind of doing this live as we go. Uh, but you get the idea of where I'm headed with this. I'm trying to balance the composition of the two pages. I'm trying to tell a story. When I go to the next page spread, I'm starting to think about, okay, maybe it's starting to get sunny. The butterflies are starting to be more active. I do like this idea for this book in particular of having a vertical image on the left and then a larger image on the right. And to me, that would be starting to show some sky, starting to think about color and balance. And maybe this is a little bit of a film strip approach uh, where you have a number of vertical images going in here. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you how I'm playing around. Really, it's a trial and error process. You just bring things in, see how it feels, um, and go from there. Another way to go about it, like I said before, is just going into layouts. And I like to look at page layouts and give this one here and then maybe a double there. And this can be a really nice way to go back to your photos and say, okay, I need two verticals. This one's nice. And then I like the idea of that one that's more moody in the woods. And then more of an artistic representation of uh, out of focus, just showing the butterflies as lights in the forest. So one of the things that most of these book builders do is they put a little number next to your image on the left-hand side. Again, this will be really small on your screen, but it's telling me that I've used that photo and I've used it once. If I put this into two content buckets, all of a sudden it's going to say there are two. And you can get rid of that photo just by clicking out on that trash. Um, but I just wanted to give you kind of a, a couple ways that you can go ahead and build books and show that it doesn't have to be as intimidating as it seems. I love the drama of this black image, and I think I would complement that by bringing in a really bright image next to it and something like that. Just trying to think about different ways to uh, tell the story of that place. And one of the important ones here would be to think about how to bring people into the story because, you know, it's about that experience of you being there and, and sharing this, this time with the butterflies. And so, um, you know, maybe you would put a different layout on that. Um, and so you can sort by single photo per page. And I want this one because it's got a fatter layout. Go back to the photos. And so some every person who does this has like a different method. They might kind of lay it all out beforehand and have a better sense of where it's going to go before they get into this point in the stage. Um, but for me, it's just a very playful process of trying things out and playing around until you get to a place where you're happy uh, with the outcome. And uh, so I don't think we'll spend too much more time here, but this little button down here, add spreads, that's where your number starts to get pretty expensive. Right now, this is a 20 page book printed at 10 inches by 12 inches. So this full spread is 10 inches high by 24 inches wide. And that's a $110 book before shipping. So this is an expensive thing and, um, and it's a time intensive thing. So it takes a lot of time to do. Um, and once you add pages, it can get even more expensive. So that's just a couple of uh, tips for you. Um, so that's just the general way that this works. I stay away from shapes that you can add because I think it's kitschy. Um, if I were to do text, the, my preference is to print everything uh, on matte paper, which is receptive to pencil. 
And so like on this spread, maybe underneath this image, I'd write down the names of the people in this image or what trail that was and what uh, sanctuary we were visiting at that time. You know, there's kind of endless numbers of things that you can do um, in these platforms. Uh, but for me, I kind of ignore all the themes. I just build my own book and play around as I've been showing you. Um, it is important to go into print preview and just make sure that your images aren't doing something like this where you intended it for it to bleed to the edge, but it actually isn't. So you kind of go page by page and just make sure everything's looking really good. Um, and like I said, before you even get to this point, making sure that you've edited your images and I'd be worried about this one on the left, uh, just making sure that it's all properly exposed. All right, so I'm going to go back to the presentation. I'm currently working on the Northern Peatlands project, and it's a project that I've put together to be able to educate around the importance of our peatlands, which are wetlands. They're bogs and fens and mires, and they have this incredible ability to store carbon. So something that I'm doing right now is I'm getting ready for an exhibit that's coming up that I'll be doing uh, this summer on June 7th is the artist opening in Old Forge, New York at The View. Um, so something that I did in preparation for this is put together a book to see how images print to get ready for which images I want to select to be able to print and frame and have exhibited in the show. So there's so many different uses for photo books. Um, and uh, you know, one of the primary ones that we use them for is just to capture our memories. And it just feels very different to have your work printed instead of just on your phone. Um, and it makes it a much more fun experience to be able to share your trip with others. Um, I do design photo books for other people. If you want to get in touch for a quote, you can reach out to me by email. Um, and you can send me all your photos and I'll build books for you. Um, but uh, you can also follow this QR code to sign up for stories from the Northern Peatlands Project and uh, follow me on Instagram as well. Uh, I'd lo I love to hear from, uh, you know, attendees of these webinars. It's really fun to, to find out what photography work you're doing or trips you're going on. So feel free to get in touch and I'll leave the last uh, few minutes here for questions. So thanks for, thanks for joining today. Charlie, thank you so much. That is such useful information. Um, I just want to point out your your screen is not showing your presentation, so we don't have that QR code. Interesting. All right, let me try again. Put that up there. See here. Do you choose matte or glossy for the books? That's a great question. Uh, I shy away from gloss. If there's a luster option, that's kind of a nice middle ground. Uh, just checking in, Sonny, is that showing? That shows up perfectly, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Good, thanks. <laughs> um, so when you look at lust, like gloss versus matte, it's a trade-off, right? I almost always print matte, and that's because I'm printing at a large enough scale. Usually my photo books are at least 10 by 10 or 10 by 12, um, that the detail that you lose from printing matte doesn't matter as much because you're a larger scale. I like the quality of matte, uh, the feel of it. The problem that I have is you're always going to be flipping through these pages. So if you get glossy, you're going to get fingerprints. Any, If you're greasy at all, it's going to show up on those pages. Um, so I, I just, I'd rather have them be matte so that the feel of it is really nice. It's, it's more of a paper feel. Um, and personally, I like, it kind of makes your photographs more, um, like artwork, um, instead of, a, a kind of a, a shiny photo, but it really is personal preference. Uh, a lot of people love the gloss feel because it it does have better definition it's sharper of an image but you get glare and you get fingerprints so it's it's really a personal preference there uh, but to me the bigger decision is whether you go with lay flat pages which literally it's the book is bound in a way so that the pages there's no curl so you don't lose any of your image it's entirely there um, 
that can be really nice but something to watch out for there is that if you get into like a 40 or 50 page book that starts to get really really thick i mean we're talking about like three four inches thick for that and it can be a little bit unwieldy uh so a couple things to think about okay have you tried shutterfly recently and if so how do you think it compares to printique yeah shutterfly my experience with it um and maybe i'm i my standard for printing is is higher than it should be um but i i just haven't been that pleased with the the way the photos are printed i just think the color reproduction so how true it is to the original image versus when it goes to print it just doesn't come out clean for me uh, with that said blurb b-l-r-b-l-u-r-b dot com they their color is a little bit flat uh, when i print with them so for if i'm sending the blurb I know that I need to increase my saturation and in increase my contrast. If I'm sending to Printique, I just send however I usually edit my photos. You, maybe I bump the exposure just a little bit. Um, but Shutterfly, I've, there's no algorithm for how to make it look better just because they're printing economically. So their inks aren't as uh, good um, and their paper isn't as good and, and their printers aren't as good. Um, with that said, for me, if I'm doing like just a, like a, we, we had a family trip and I've got some pictures of family that I want to have and I don't want to break my bank. Um, absolutely. Uh, and the other thing that I'll say too, to save money is that all of these places have um, deals. So you want to build your book and then sit on it and wait until the deal comes up because maybe you'll be able to get 50% off or even 40% is great. Um, or a buy one, get one situation. So if you're patient, you can get photo books uh, printed a little bit more cheaply. Okay, excellent. Um, one of our viewers says that they've noticed that when they go to upload a photo to various sites, that the memory size is smaller than the original photo. Is there something they can do to ensure the full size is exported over to the site? She's sending... That's JPEG yeah. files. That's a good question. I think that's really dependent on the platform that you use. And each platform should have a Q&A page or specs page that tells you um, whether they reduce file size once it's up uploaded, if they're, um, and then if there are file limitations of how, how big they can be. Um, so I, I can't speak to it without knowing more details of exactly what's going on there, but you could even email these places and say, hey, you know, I want a, the best possible quality, you know, what's the biggest file size you can use. Um, but with that said, you know, for the images that I'm taking, if I'm printing them 10 by 14, I'm, I'm pulling that image from a raw image and that file size is huge it's ridiculous if i am exporting that file to a jpeg to upload to a book i'm often dropping the quality of the jpeg or just like the percentage of the file size you can also just limit the file size so that it comes out at like five megabytes at the most um, unless you're printing these images huge which would be like you know your longest edge is 24 inches or more um, you really don't need huge file sizes. Uh, and in some cases, the compression that these online platforms are using to reduce the file size um, is not as good as the compression that you can get from your original image and then scaling it down to a smaller file size. So every time that you can control that is better um than letting them reduce the the size of the file if that makes sense okay um can you talk a little bit about adding text to your photos do you do that or do you find one uh platform does that better than another uh so if you're going full custom and you're building your book in something like indesign it's really important that you uh, put your text in however you want it, lay it out, and then you have to outline your text because 
most of these uh, platforms you're exporting a certain like a PDF or a certain file type. And if you haven't outlined your text, it won't come out clean. But if you're using a platform online like I just looked at, and another one that's cool, Blurb has a free download that allows you to do everything on your desktop. And then it syncs, once you're back to internet, it'll sync up, which is pretty cool. Like if you're traveling back from a trip, you could actually be building your book on the way home. Um, anyway, that was a little bit of an aside. Your question was about type. On my photo books, I'm... I don't like to put text in. Uh, maybe I'll put a title page at the very beginning, um, but I like the idea of kind of handwriting in with a really hard pencil so it's kind of a thin light, um, almost the way that you would sign your artwork um, if it's just for me. But if I'm doing it for other people, um, I've had success with Printique's text insert um feature it's just you're limited by fonts but they do a nice job of making sure the text is clean and and printed well um, that's kind of a roundabout way of of saying it but i think if you were to put text with your photo book and you wanted to really emphasize the photos just creating a small text box having the font be fairly you know as small as possible helps to have the information there so you remember but also you know focus on the photos as well mm. What is your personal DPI minimum for printed photographs in a final book? Oh gosh, uh, I I don't I don't have one. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just there's so many kind of like factors in there. It just all it all depends, I guess, is my answer to that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, do you sell your photo books or have any plans to? I would love to. I, I don't currently have my photo books for sale. I think um, I've always wanted to, especially with this Northern Peatlands work, I've wanted to put together kind of a coffee table book with kind of quick facts about it and then some dramatic uh, images like the ones on the screen right now. Um, but I've, I think what's limited me is I want it to be perfect. <laughs> and so I'm I'm kind of picking away at that project. But, um, you know, I think that we live in a world where you can self-publish so easily um, through a number of different avenues that I think it's too bad that, um, that I'm limiting myself <laughs> by not just biting the bullet and going for it. But I'm kind of waiting until I have enough time to be able to really do it the way I want to. So right now, the long answer to that is that I don't have any of my own for sale. I've just done this for uh, portfolios to be able to shop around my images again, um, whether I'm bringing them to expos to be able to try and work with partners on certain projects, um, or I'm bringing them to uh, show to be able to get my work exhibited somewhere. Um, or I'm printing them for myself for trip memories uh, at the moment. But one day I'll have a book out there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Do you ever put a thin line around photos? Uh, I'm thinking I, of like that white border. Yeah, a border. I haven't. Um, I can see instances where that would be helpful and kind of give some presence to your image, but mostly i've just worked with white space or full bleed um, and haven't haven't gone into that but i i think i could definitely see some images where that would be really helpful to play around with um do you have an uh an opinion about snapfish yeah i've i haven't done i haven't printed books through snapfish i've seen books printed by snapfish um and i I, to me, the quality feels similar to Shutterfly, um, but I haven't used the interface and I haven't, uh, haven't used it myself. So I can't speak to that one too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that, like I said, that was so useful. I, I can't wait to actually, you've motivated me to start organizing some images. So thank <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> um, but that is the last question we have. So I will turn it back to you for closing comments. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, hopefully this was helpful if you're thinking about making books or you have made books. 
Uh, so feel free to get in touch with more questions. Uh, and thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. I also want to thank everybody who tuned in. Please join us again next week for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out this next week's lineup, including registration links, on our website at nathab.com forward slash webinars. We did record today's presentation, and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, I'll conclude the webinar. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone.